and we're like, okay, I know it's a bit late, but uh, let's just see, all right? I'm gonna look at every completed deal for every Premier League club on transfer deadline day last week and just grade them from worst to best on how well I think they're going to do. And lads, there were some weird panicky deals last week. I've been like, you're not having bought anything for anyone on Christmas Eve. And so instead, your sister's just getting a bucket of your poo. Right, let's go. 23rd William Fulham. Is this a joke? Why? Why is William back in the Premier League? Yes, he was once an utter baller at Stamford Bridge. But I mean, that, that was many, many years ago. I know Fulham made a habit of cozying up to ex-Chelsea stars in their 30s, but do you really think that this guy is the Brazilian Damien Duff? No! From what we saw at Arsenal two years ago, not only does he have the fitness of Mr. Potato Head, but I mean, he'll say anything for the check. I mean, remember when he was targeting Champions League football with Arsenal? I'm surprised he wasn't immediately dragged away by the doctors in my coat. This is a 34-year-old ham sandwich who, back in the Brazilian League, was forced out due to death threats. Ah, does that sound like he was playing well? Um, no, I'm pretty sure if he was scoring goals every week, he wouldn't have Corinthian supporters threatening to kidnap him and feed him to the pigs. I know it's only a one-year contract and a free transfer, but I don't care. If he scores a singular Premier League goal this season, I will eat an entire birthday cake out of a public bin. Willie, that's gonna be about as much used to full of as a toilet seat made of cheese. He is going to be awful. Tony can. What were you thinking? 22nd Willy Bully in Nottingham Forest. So apparently, former Wolves fan favourite Willy Bully actually has the attitude of a hormonal duck. Bully was a modern day Wolves legend of centre half. And yeah, last week, the Ivory Coast International was just refusing to sit on the bench. But I remember when Carlos Tevez refused to come off the bench for Man City. And time nearly stopped still. Honestly, the media were reacting as if they just caught him in bed with a cow. But with Bolly, yes, it is still under football sacrilege and a disgrace. But I guess. Nobody seems to care. Not one person has made a fuss. Steve Cooper, take tips from QPR. When you choose to sign 20 players in one summer, um, they need to be the right characters. Not someone who's shown to be about as professional as a drunk babysitter. This is gonna be like when QPR signed Chris Samba. Just watch. This man is toxic sludge. 21st, about phase Leicester. Listen, I know that Leicester's transfers usually work out, but lads, listen, it's not just that about phase looks like David Luiz. Someone who, if you had him in your defense, ah, uh, it's a bit like watching your granny play Connect Four with the dog. And someone is choking on a piece. As a spectator, you can never really relax. Listen, phase is a desperate 15 million pound panic buy from Red. Uh, Leicester did not want to have to spend any money this summer, but hey, I mean, they were given a 70 million pound check from Chelsea for Wesley for five. So there was no way they could justify not buying a centre half. This is a Belgian defender who, yeah, began life at Anderlecht, but no. He's not the next Vincent Company. I just have a gut feeling he'll be able to sod it as an old woman's poo. 20th, Dennis Zakari at Chelsea. Does anybody else think that this deal stinks of Saul Niguez? I knew this time the last year that Niguez, an unwanted little cover tribute fielder who'd been off form for a year, I knew he'd just be an expensive Steve Sidwell. And similarly, yes, a year ago, Dennis Zakaria was hot property, and other steel rock in the field for Borussia Mönchengladbach, but the Swiss midfielder never settled at Juventus. Ozzy, this summer, Max Allegri looked like he was getting close to stuffing Zakaria in a bin bag and throwing him into a skip. This is a guy who this summer was being offered to Nice, so a long move to Stamford Bridge. Ozzy, he's barely gonna play, and when he does, he'll have such little impact to the point where Chelsea fans are going to conclude that he's about as much use as having chocolate in your shoe. 19th, Josh Bowler, Nottingham Forest. Well, this... This is weird. Nottingham Forest just bought 23-year-old Blackpool winger Josh Bowler, an utter Everton reject, don't forget, and then immediately loaned him to Greece. I mean, he's now playing in Olympiacos, lining up on the left wing with Marcelo as the overlapping left back. You yeah, know, the guy with five Champions Leagues? Just bizarre. This is just an ordinary ginger winger who looks like an extra off the hobbit. While Marcelo is just the epitome of football success. Auntie, Marcelo will be turning up to games driving the latest Lamborghini. While Bowler will probably be getting the bus with his mum. But yeah, no, I don't think he'll do anything for Forrest. Don't really see what the point was. 18th, Wilfred Gnonto leads. We are never gonna see Wilfred Gnonto play. Listen, he's the latest Italian Wonder Kid striker, right? An Italian underage international who spent eight years in the books of Inter Milan before being binned off to Switzerland. That's a bit like the beginning and end of Mario Balotelli's career, considering now he's just eating cheeseburgers in a Swiss hotel. But listen, this kid is a talent, yes. I mean, he's the current youngest ever goal scorer for the Italy national team. And yes, he's a coup for Leeds to get him on a five year deal for less than five million quid. But my guess is that he won't settle in Yorkshire. He'll go out alone and only play about five games for the club. Honestly, just 
I have a bad feeling about this one. 17, Ainsley made a Nile Southampton. Ainsley made a Nile's career is in free fall. I'm sorry, but it is. I almost feel sorry for the guy. Three years ago, it looked like his career was going somewhere. This guy was a virtual ever present, a right back under Unai Emery at Arsenal. But Mikel Arteta very quickly decided that he liked made the Niles about as much as you'd like a burger stuffed with your nan's pubic hair. But, and then he went on to flop West Brom on loan, and then sadly on loan at Roma. That, that was his big chance to impress Josie Mourinho. I mean, Rome. I've already given lifelines to the likes of Chris Smalling and Tammy Abraham. But Ainsley, no, he had the impact of wet lettuce. So I'd imagine his confidence is on the floor. I mean, where does he fit in Southampton's team? They've already got two right backs better than him. And does he dislodge either Romeo Lavia, James Ward Prowse, or Joe Arebo? This is just another failed loan, I know it is. 16th, Carlos Vinicius Fulham. It speaks volumes of how far Carlos Vinicius' stock is full. That nobody has made a fuss about him joining Fulham on loan. As you, I would imagine at least 30% of you out there had no clue. I mean, late deadline day signing are weird. I remember when I was a child, I didn't realize that Newcastle had signed Antoine Sibierski until I read Match Magazine the next week. Ah, the days before the internet. So yeah, there'll be some kids out there watching this video. Um, uh, have I blown your mind? Is this the equivalent of me telling you that Darth Vader is Luke's dad? Or that Santa Claus has meals on his crotch? Listen, Vinicius, three years ago, had the hype that Darwin Nunes has now. 24 goals in his debut season for Benfica. The next monster Brazil center forward, right? Ah, uh, um, he's now... 27, I taught them flop, but even more forgivably, somehow, a PSV Eindhoven flop. And so now, oh, just enjoy sitting on the bench all season, praying for Alexander Mitrovic to get hit by a car. Ozzy, he will not net a single Premier League goal all year. 15th, Jan Bednarek, Aston Villa. Surely, surely Aston Villa fans are underwhelmed beyond belief. This, this is the alternative for Diego Carlos, the new flashy Brazilian buy from Sevilla after he tore his ACL. Really, this? This is his replacement, a scruffy, bog-standard Polish defender who's been involved in two 9-0 defeats. Honestly, the four fellas probably so traumatized, probably wakes up three times a night just to vomit on the floor. Listen, <laughs> Villa were desperate. Price well, apparently Jared was sniffing around Craig Doss. Aw, oh, it's a bit embarrassing. It's more like a recently divorced man admitting to his mates that, yeah, last night at 3 a.m., he was sending a new DM to his cousin. So, Benrek, yeah, he's decent cover for the bench, I suppose, but uh, I don't know. This is a bit like receiving a birthday present of a Breaking Bad box out of your mum, but uh, before the day is out, you've accidentally snipped the discs in half, and so she then replaces this amazing present with a homemade videotape of your dad making love to a hole in the couch. Oh, no thanks. 14th, Leander to Donker, Aston Villa. I like Leander to Donker. But this is a massive panic buy. 14 million pounds for a 27 year old Belgian midfielder who's no longer wanted at Wolves. 14 million quid is a lot of money for someone who is not going to be squeezing past Bubakar Kamara, John McGinn, or Douglas Louise in Villas Midfield. I'm half convinced Steven Gerrard only bought him in case the board saw Louise behind his back at half 10 at night. I mean, I'm pretty sure if that had happened, he'd have been throwing a kettle off the owner's car. The Dunker, I don't know, to me, it's not the worst signing. But it's average. 13th, Manuel Akanji, Man City. Welcome to the latest Nathan Ake. Listen, Manuel Akanji is a decent Swiss defender who was a good servant at Russia Dortmund, but a deadline day 15 million pound buy. I mean, he's not a first team starter and clearly just bought his backup. Again, like Ake, when he plays, he'll probably look really good, but he won't play much. Next! 12th, Arthur Mello, Liverpool. Arthur Mello is a good player. Lads, it's only a few years ago Barcelona inserted a 400 million euro clause in his contract. And yet now, Liverpool have him on loan from Juventus. But again, borrowing a high profile footballer who's at a low ebb, it's all very sound in the guys. Listen, on paper, a Brazilian midfield trio of Thiago Alcantara, Fabinho and Arthur Mello would make your mouth fill up with saliva, right? But he's also made of glass. I don't know, I feel like he's gonna have a Liverpool legacy not on par with Lucas Leiva, no, but uh, Alberto Aquilani. I mean, he'll be okay when he plays. Nothing horrendous, some tidy passing, and maybe the odd wonder goal. Even though um, he's nearly 26 and only ever scored six league goals in his life. 11th, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Chelsea. I don't know. I honestly don't know what to make of Pierre Emerick Aubameyang returning to London. Yes, he usually starts like house on fire at new clubs, but he's also the same aging brat who was off form for two years at Arsenal and who Mikel Arteta couldn't wait to chuck out the door. I have no idea if Aubameyang will be good or not. My prediction is he'll last one season at Stamford Bridge, maybe score seven goals in the league, and just scuttle out the back door next summer to AC Milan or maybe even a Turkish club if they can offer him a bag. He'll probably just have the impact of Romelu Lukaku last season. A few goals, yes, but 
All a bit meh. 10. Leyman Kurzawa Fulham. Leyman Kurzawa could easily be the classic case of washed up big name who leaves a monster European club to just grab a lazy paycheck at a gullible English struggler. You know, the modern day Josie Basingua, right? But no, I don't think Kurzawa, despite being frozen out of PSG, I don't think he's now just some washed up meathead who'll just spend the season eating donuts in his car. This is a man with a point to prove and he's only 29. But... He hasn't played a single game of football since May 2021. He is a class act when fit, but I mean, he's had a year off. He'll be rustier than a robot's knob. It'll take him until at least Christmas to get his fitness back. Honestly, I hope he spent this summer on a treadmill instead of, oh, I don't know, chewing pizza in the sink. I think he'll be good in the second half of the season after the World Cup, and he'll prove to be a quality full of signing, but yeah, you're gonna have to wait. Ninth, James Garner Everton. Manchester United fans right now are crying into a bucket over the club's decision to sell James Garner. Yeah, this reminds me of when Mark Noble nearly had a seizure when West Ham dared to sell Greddy Diangana. Um, yeah, he's since rotting in the championship playing for Steve Bruce, What you've got Lucas Paqueta in the team. I mean, relax. This is a similar overreaction. Am I the only one who can see that this guy is just a modern day Tom Cleverley or Darren Gibson? I mean, yeah, Man United could afford to carry bang average midfielders with a technique of a Peppa Pig balloon back when they had Sir Alex Ferguson in charge, but not anymore. Lads, Garner has only ever played championship football. I mean, Cleverley looked class in that division too, and he is drawing in every midfield, which is already pretty stacked. Lad, Delia Lee failed at Goodison Park. I'm not saying that Garner will be a flop. I think. A decent squad player for Everton. A bit of a modern day James McCarthy. But I mean, if he ever plays a single match for England, I will lick peanut butter off a stranger's foot on the London tube. He is not the one that got away. Eighth, Daniel James Fulham. Does somebody want to explain to me why is Dan James at Fulham? Feels like only two minutes ago he was at Old Trafford. I mean, last year, Leeds United finally got their man after sniffing around the speedy winger for years. And now, just a sideways step to Craven Cottage. And on loan? I mean, What's he done? I mean, and uh, Jesse Marsh just walked in on him while he was kissing his own sister in the dark? Are things now just so painfully awkward between the two of them that Marsh has just gotten rid of the pure awkwardness? I, I really don't get it. Leeds fans, explain to me. Why? Why have you loaned him out? I mean, Manchester United paid close to 20 million for this guy. I think he'll be a brilliant signing for Fulham. I mean, he's already got the pace. If he can work on his crossing, then with Mitrovic literally begging for headers chucked into the box, he can chip in with about 10 assists. I think he'll be good. Really good. What a full of coup! Seventh, one Larry of Southampton. Yeah, considering Southampton have been so impressive with midfield wonder kid Romeo Lavia after he was spat up by Man City. Well, now they go back to the NEF for 18 year old fullback Juan Larios. I mean, clearly it's not enough that they've got a 19 year old Tino Levramento from Chelsea. Honestly, the Saints like their fullbacks young. Lavia is a kid who came through Barcelona's La Masia Academy and has been indoctrinated into Pep Guardiola ball at City. Clearly, there's now a well rounded, beautifully crafted, smooth baller in there. And yeah, He's a six million pound signing. I mean, give it five years, and Southampton will be cashing in for eight times that amount. Ozzy, this one's a good future deal. Six, Sammy the Dozy, Southampton. Yeah, sticking with Southampton, and yes, another Manchester City star that they snapped up on the same day. In comes 19 year old winger Sammy the Dozy, son of Man City rescued from Millwall in 2019, which is a bit like a wealthy billionaire choosing to just adopt toothless children from caravans in, in Peru. Ozzy, imagine being in the Millwall Academy. I mean, one of the training drills is probably just how quickly can you stab a pensioner in the eye? Listen, a Dozy is promising. He's been scoring for City in pre season matches in the past. He looks lightning fast, really skillful feet, and you've got him for just 10 million pounds. He's going to be a future Saint superstar. Fifth, Adrisa Gay Everton. So but Theresa Gay has come crawling back to Everton after his PSG nightmare. Listen, this guy is a good signing for the club. I didn't think Everton were able to attract players from Champions League clubs anymore. I thought it was just Frank Lampard picking Burnley on the phone. Gay will be more of what he was in his first spell at the club. Everton fans know what they're getting. A solid beefcake in midfield. And for just two million pounds. This is a guy they won't sold for 30 million quid to get the club's players player of the year back. For essentially the same sort of money you'd win on the chase. Brilliant signing this. Fourth, Anthony Man United. Eight 85 million pounds is a lot of money for a footballer from the Air Divisie. I mean, we could just be looking at an expensive Memphis the Pie. But I do think he'll be good. He's Brazilian flair. He'll go on to be about as good as Nani. There'll be tricks, goals, assists. He'll be a fan favorite, yes, but no. I mean, is he ever gonna be worth 85 million pounds? No, no he's not. You will always have overpaid. But at the same time, yeah, he'll be a good player for the club. Third, Billy Gilmore Brighton. So, 
this. This is where the Chelsea story ends for Billy Gilmore. After five years of being Chelsea's next great home, it, it's just been sold to Brighton for nine million quid. Oh, a bit anticlimactic this. But don't worry, Billy. It's also the same club who sold Kevin De Bruyne. Listen, his Norwich loan spell was a disaster, and that's why he's been sold at 21. But he's a ball playing midfielder with an eye for a pass. I think we all know he's tailor made for Brighton and Potter Ball, although I do maintain that manager is an overrated hipster who'll soon be found out for being the bearded fraud that he is. But yeah, Gilmore, he'll have a good three years in Brighton's midfield before earning a 25 million pound move to Spurs. Oh, he wouldn't do that out of loyalty to Chelsea! Ah, wouldn't he? Because last I checked, he had both Celtic and Rangers on his CV. Second Martin to Bradcom and United. This. This is one of the most clever signings of the summer. Why is nobody talking about this? Manchester United have the best second choice goalie in the entire league. I'm sorry, but this man is permanently quality. And I know he's only a loan from Newcastle, but he's gonna very quickly become an Old Trafford cult hero. This guy who's gonna spend this season soaking in European nights in Old Trafford. He is going to be the cup goalie. He can play what? 20 games this season? I don't know. I don't know what but he will do something big this season. It might be a last minute fingertip save in an FA Cup semi-final, or being the hero in a winning penalty shootout in the Europa League, but he will do something to earn cult hero status. Manchester United fans will love him, and the loan fee is just two million quid. Honestly, what a bargain. I mean, the alternative was just having a sulking Dean Henderson just being a toxic melt in the dressing room, but the Brabka, he's gonna be like a skinny schoolboy. This is his dream! Honestly! What a deal this is! First, Duje Chaleta Carr, Southampton, the best signing in the list. 25 years old, a Croatian rock of a centre half who was brilliant at Marseille. I'm just surprised that Southampton, a man who signed Duje Chaleta Char for just 9 million quid? I mean, don't forget, he was a stranded airport away from signing for Liverpool two years ago. I'm gonna say it. The Saints have won the transfer window. Raul Masnud is building an exciting young Southampton team. And Chaletta Char is going to prove quality in the defence. He is going to be one of the best centre halves outside the top six. Finally, the Southampton have finally got a replacement for Virgil van Dijk. He is going to be your best defender since, since the Dutchman. This is going to be a brilliant transfer. Well done, Saints. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments. How do you think the transfer is going to do? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.